Hey guys, it's Mark Striegel, and we are about to get into part one of a recent Talking Metal live episode. We do these on Friday nights. The guests on this episode were Anthony Esposito, followed by Michael Angelo Badio. So in this part one, part one of two, if you will, we're going to hear and see our interview with Anthony Esposito. Uh, again, Anthony's connection was not the best. So yeah, you'll you'll see what I mean. And after the interview with Anthony, we'll just kind of fade it out and we'll uh, pick it back up with another part, part two that is, where we start with the Michelangelo Badio interview, if that makes any sense, uh, which I think it does, right? Okay, join me on Patreon, guys, for additional content. Okay, thanks. Here we go. Part one of Talking Metal Live, a recent edition of Talking Metal Live. <laughs> Yo. All right. John Astronomy, Mark Striegel here. It is the Talking Metal live stream. Also the Talking Metal podcast, of course, after the fact, but it is June 19th. We are streaming here live. John, how are you? I'm doing great. I'm very happy that we're up and live and we fixed all the technical issues we had last week. And not only are we live on Facebook, but we're also live on Zoom. So if Ooh, yes, yes. And who are the guests today? You want to tell us, John? Yes, we have two great guests. We have a longtime friend of mine, Anthony Esposito. He's been with a bunch of great bands. Currently, he's playing with Jakey e. Lee's Red Dragon Cartel. And we have Michelangelo Badio, who has played with Nitro. He's done solo stuff. And he is an unbelievable... One of the best. Yeah, really. So Guitar players, yeah. And, and Michael uh, is a longtime friend of mine. Um, you know, I, Anthony, I know, I know, I know we went down to his studio way back in the day when he was in the city. We went to the heaven and hell show, I believe with him. Does that sound right? Or at least hung with him. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so I've known him a while. I know Michael a little bit better. I had the opportunity of doing a, uh, uh, that metal gear for vh1.com with Michelangelo Badio, which got like a gazillion views, which a uh, great guy. And I've been going to see Michael play live since I was literally like 14 or 15 years old. So uh, always great to catch up with him. He's got a brand new record out called More Machine Than Man. And uh, I just uh, listened to it and it's just awesome. Cool, cool. So Mark, I have to tell you something and I want to explain this right here. Yeah, what's what's up? What's that? It's like a tray or something. What's going on there? It's a silver platter. So I want to show silver you- Silver platter, okay. During COVID, I've went a little crazy. It's COVID time again. A snow cone machine. This is an actual okay. snow cone. It's got <laughs> you can't go to the carnival, so you bring the carnival to you. Carnival, so I'm going to bring it here. I'm going to set this down. And um, I have actual real popcorn, people. Like, it's, it's made with coconut oil. I'm going to eat a piece. Um, it comes in bags, just like you get at the uh, carnival or stadium. And I have a hot dog machine. So I got these things, it says hot dog, and then you, you. Wow, so you got a whole meal there, ready to go. Hot dogs in here, um, and then I have, I'm gonna save the best for last. I, since we have uh, guitar players on, or, and a bass player, I have a Diodario, I love my strings, beer, uh, draft Heineken that uh, came out of a tap. Okay, let's do a talking metal toast. Cheers. Ka-ching. And then I'm saving the best for last. I have a Dash Vodka Martini. Go to dashvodka.com. You've got to be 21 to enter. In honor of National Martini Day. Today is officially National Martini Day. Uh, my cousin Hank Reeves and Rini Reeves told me, and uh, this, this one goes out to them. So let's do a second toast. All right. I'm drinking champagne. I should be drinking a martini. Uh, Dash vodka, of course, some of the best vodka you can buy. I mean, it's so awesome. Absolutely. It's um, handmade in Texas. 
and it's extraordinarily smooth. You would love this, Mark. When we we're going to be getting together soon, I imagine. Yeah, get your dash vodka. Yeah, and and I can't wait for the day. Um, you know, I was talking to Emily about the show, and I was like, well, I don't know when the COVID stuff is we're in the clear which it seems like we're going that direction already here in new jersey i said we got to go to john's to do this uh i i like doing this every friday but i know like a lot of times we go to concerts on friday you have shows on friday so maybe you know we'll see where we're at after the summer but maybe we move this to like a thursday or something or i i don't know i i, I want to keep doing it though because i'm having so much fun doing this doing it i love it um i'm very happy i'm back in the groove the, the talking metal groove, and it's really cool. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna push out this tray and I'm gonna bring over my Dash uh, Martini though. <laughs> so, All right, yeah, cool. And, and so I'm, let's see, we got, it's 8.06 right now on the East Coast and we have again, uh, Anthony Esposito, who, I mean, man, those first two Lynch Mob records, I gotta tell you, John, I was such a big fan of those. Uh, Wicked Sensation with Oni on vocals and then of course they, followed that up with I guess it was a self-titled record with Robert Mason coming in and man so so much good stuff uh somebody is is in our chat on uh on zoom it's a website yeah yeah okay <laughs> so we we actually have at least one person uh, on the zoom link and uh they love Pornhub that's a pornographic website <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> I love Pornhub. Do you love Pornhub? Uh, not as much as you do, Pablo, but uh, thanks for checking in. And we got people on Facebook checking in, too. Victor Ruiz is watching. Victor, how are you? David Barnett says, loved Anthony and Lynch Mob. Yeah, you and me both, David. Rich Ward, what's up, Anthony Esposito? Uh, well, he's not here yet, Roger. Or that's Roger Ward. Roger Ward, I think. Uh, I think I said Rich Ward from Fozzie. No, uh, Roger Ward. But uh, yeah, anyways, cool. He'll be here soon. So hang tight, guys. Uh, Doug's, Doug Winter says, sup, John. Hey, sup. Hey, sup. Sup. I'm going to my Facebook, guys, so that I can see your comments and questions. So stand by for that. Yeah, coming up minutes away from Anthony Esposito, a uh, longtime friend of mine and a great musician, great bass player, uh, coming right up. Okay. And I got to tell you, it was very cool to see Robert Mason back in Lynch Mob. I know Anthony hasn't played with him in a long, long time, but uh, I, at M3, what, was that last year or two years ago? I can't, can't remember. But yeah, to see him back on stage with Lynch Mob was, was awesome. I'm thinking it was last year. But oh. those M3s, they sometimes uh, blend together. They're so good. I'm missing M3 this year. It was postponed to September. I don't know if it's going to happen. I mean, they haven't canceled it. So we'll see. We'll see. Hey, I uh, want to... My son, Grant, you want to come in and say hi, Grant? Sure. You see how long Grant's hair is getting? Hey, Grant, how are you? I told him he's starting to look like a rocker. I know, that's great. <laughs> you look, he did a headbanging move right there. What do you need, buddy? Oh, you just told us to come down here at eight. Oh, no, I said, don't come down here at eight. <laughs> uh, yeah. Here's my other son, Harrison. You want to say hi here? Mm. No? Maybe next week. Maybe next week. So stay tuned, guys. Next week, Harrison Striegel might be coming on this stream. He's not coming on this week. Brian Borges, Rich St. Van. Uh, Rich uh, is a friend of Anthony's, and he lives not too far away from here. We should have him over one day as well. Uh, cool. Brad Dahl from Utah reminds me that Lynch Mob was two years ago. At, at M3, and Brad is a guy I've seen at M3 a couple times, and he has a great online radio station, by the way, which I have the app on my phone, Yarg Metal. You should check that out, Yarg Metal, John. And someone said that, uh, my, hey, Lance Walker, somebody commented that my mic sounds good today, which is great. It, the it, These comments come by quickly, and I can't scroll, so thank right. you for said that. Um, we are... Um, Night Bob is watching. Oh, my I, gosh, the legendary I, Night Bob. Night Bob's on? Yeah, and I said Night Bob's watching. We have a legend watching us tonight. Wow. We have a real legend, Night Bob. Uh, in my opinion, the greatest ever sound engineer, sound man. Uh, he's a guitar player, too, guitar collector, and a uh, guy who has so many amazing stories. And yeah. we are seconds away from Anthony Esposito. He is logging on as we speak. 
Yeah, I, Night Bob, I believe they talk about him in that official Aerosmith book. I believe he's in that book. Uh, if yeah, he, he worked with Aerosmith, he worked with Kiss, he worked with Paul Stanley, he works with Ace, of course. And I first met Night Bob with Ace in Old Forge, Pennsylvania. Cool. All right, folks, we're seeing if, uh, and up oh, there he is. Anthony, can you hear us? He's getting he's getting logged in here, guys. We should hopefully have audio with him in a, in a second. Adjusting the frame. <laughs> hey, Ant. I don't know if he hears us, but we we oh, did he's connecting to audio now. So stand by, guys. We have Anthony Esposito coming on the Talking Metal live stream and the Talking Metal podcast right here in hopefully just a few seconds. <laughs> Anthony, can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you now. Hey. Awesome. Hey, yeah, uh, you're looking great. <laughs> Boy, thanks. I just showered. I got <laughs> my riding mower all day, mowing the pasture. Anthony lives on an amazing piece of property in Pennsylvania where he has a farm and an entire recording studio, and it's like a complex. And people like Jakey Lee go there and just hang out and record videos and albums and everything. So, Anthony, hi, first off, how are you? How's, how's life treating you? I'm doing great. How are you and Mark doing? How's everybody over there in, uh, in uh, COVID Central, right? Central. Yeah, we're doing all right, man. I mean, it's starting to, things are starting to go in the right direction. We're seeing stuff open back up, which is nice. And uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're doing fine. We're doing fine. Uh, always a pleasure to talk with you. We were just talking. Do you remember hanging out before the Heaven and Hell show years ago at a bar? You know, I was going to ask you. I was going to ask you about it because I let something slide that night that you said. And um, I always felt like I should own up to it. You had just went to see Lynch Mob. And it, okay. right before that show with Heaven and Hell, I remember it was Heaven and Hell at Radio City. Right, and right. Uh, and and we kind of met at a bar afterwards and hung out and drank. And you had said something. I was like, uh, you said some of that. You just went to see Lynch Mob like a couple weeks before that. Okay. And it was the Reevolution tour. And I said, well, how was he? And he go, ah, oh, it was okay. He had a bunch of young guys in his band. They were okay. And that was me because I had cut my hair really short. It was when I had my spiky haircut. Oh. And you, so I let you go. Like, I kind of just like let you go with it. And right. I was like, I should have told him that that was actually me on bass, you know? Wow. 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 Well, <laughs> great. That's so funny, Anthony. Anthony, you were lucky. You can cut your hair short. You can have spiky hair. You can, it's back like the, it's, it's it's to your lynch mob length at this point now, and uh, you're lucky. I wish my hair doesn't grow; it just stays exactly the same all the time. In this weather and in this humidity, I'd way prefer to have it short and spiky than long. <laughs> yeah, humidity definitely plays tricks on my hair for sure. So, so um, the last time I saw you, you were uh, on tour, with Red Dragon Cartel, which. To uh, all the fans, I'm sure know that that's uh, Jakey Lee's group that he put together, and um, the the stuff is great. You were touring for the Patina album that came out in 2018, and so what's happening with Red Dragon Cartel? Well, we were um, we only did like 25, 30 max shows last year to promote Patina. And uh, we're really proud of the CD. We're really proud. We put our time, a year and a half, to, 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 to make it and, and create on the ranch. And just, we really took our time and um, we're really proud of that CD. So we're, we were going to go out again. We had a run booked in April and, uh, and the whole COVID thing hit. So we had to cancel it. So I think I spoke to Jake today and he's going to uh, book some more shows in the spring. He wants to uh, promote Patina more. He doesn't feel that that CD got its promotion by touring on it, you know? So we're probably gonna tour that early September next. Uh, yeah, 
who have been drunk retired. He announced his retirement on the last tour. And uh, we have a new drummer who I'm working with at the ranch. We've just been jamming and, and working on the songs. Yeah. Now, uh, did you say you guys are going back out in September? Like this? No. Spring. Next spring. Spring, Next spring. 2021. Spring. Yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. Cool. That, well, a yeah, lot of people were booking gigs if for, like taking earlier gigs from 2020, booking them in the fall. But now it seems like the, the bigger trend is to just cancel everything in 2020 and start over again in the spring of 2021. So who knows? Yeah, I think Jake wants to wait where people don't have anything in the back of their minds and there's a vaccine and people could just come out and enjoy the show. And, uh, you know, we were trying to go out. We were trying to book a couple of tours uh, that didn't work out. We were trying to go out with Black Label Society. We thought we thought Jake and Zach on the same bill would be would be a great show. And then uh, we were also trying to do something with Lynch Mob, and we thought Jake and George on the same bill would be a great show. And both of us, so unless we could get something, we, we'd like to tour with someone else and not really go out on our own. Um, this way it's more people and bigger place and, and, and we can spread the word more. But, uh, you know, we're going to take what we can get, you know? Right. Wow, that would be amazing to have you guys, uh, Jakey Lee and George Lynch, doing a tour together. That would be really... Yeah, uh, George, George passed on the idea. Um, and, and that's when he announced that Lynch Mob was going out with Dawkins. Okay. All right. Well, speaking of Lynch Mob, it's been 30 years now. This is the 30 year anniversary of that just insanely good Wicked, Wicked Sensation record, uh, an album that you were heavily involved with and played on. Uh, Max Norman producing, of course, of Ozzy and Megadeth fame. Any memories you can share of that album coming together, like maybe going into the stu studio and working with Max? Well, well we brought in Max Nick Patino. We were, back because, uh, we were talking, I was talking to Jake and our common denominator was Max. Like Max did Bark in the Moon, Max Wicked. I'm like, wouldn't it be great if Max and Bob Nick on Patina with Red Dragon? And so I called up Max and I'm like, hey, bro, what's going on? And he was like, oh my God, how you been? And, and, and uh, I, I told him, we sp I spoke to Jake about you being involved. And he's like, I'd love to be involved, love both you guys, whatever I can do. So he handed a mix to Patina. Um, back in with Wick, I was 22 when we were writing that record. Um, I was the baby in the band. And uh, I went literally from busing tables in Hell's Kitchen to um, rehearsing in a, it was like a chapel church where we wrote that record it we over we took over a church and set up on the altar and i remember riding to rehearsal every night on my harley next to nick nick had a springer harley and the two of us would ride through the desert from cave creek into scottsdale air park where this this church was and um I remember we really took our time on that record. We probably wrote for six or eight months and um, everything was new to me. Um, the term first barbecue was definitely the, the case with me in that record. I was sort of like in this haze and I was so young and I was just enjoy enjoying life. And I went from bus boy to being in this big, rock band the same year i went from uh dating my first wife to marrying her to having my first child my son tyler was born after sound check of the first show we did with on wicked tour and it was just this euphoria fantasy dreamland that was just a whirlwind incredible and um I mean, Max, I remember Max because when we went into one-on-one, -on -one, the recording studio, and we wanted to originally set up the band like we were on stage. 
Those of you over there, Metallica didn't walk out after them in the studio. The live room was maxed. So we brought in a PA. We wanted to set up the band on stage. And we actually tried to record Wicked, the album, live, set up on stage. And we got probably a week and uh, realized that that wasn't going to work. So we went to the more traditional way and set up his drums and um, cut drums for like two weeks. And then it came time for me to do this. And like I said, I was 22. I was green. I was new. And um, I really, I really gave it to Max. Um, he could have fired me. Like I was, I was still, my hearing wasn't as fine tuned as it is now and playing like you think you're playing right, but you're really not locking it in exactly. And Max, at that time, Max could have easily fired me and we were in LA and brought in any bass player in LA the next day. And Max stuck with me. And it probably took 10 or 12 days for me to do bass, but he made me a better bass player by explaining and teaching to me by going through the process rather than just throwing in the towel and getting somebody else in. And after those 10 or 12 days, I was a much better player. And um, he taught me how to listen, which is very key in being a musician. It's one thing to play along with a CD, or but it's another thing to play inside the music, inside the song, and listen to what other people are doing and, and lock in, you know? And I, I, I cherish him, and I thank him dearly doing that because he made a better player. And now when I'm in the studio and I'm producing newer bands, I understand when they go through that and, 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 and I'm, I'm way patient and explain to them and try to teach them how to live with Max me, sort of pass it down, you know, keep teaching, you know? Uh, Anthony, that's such a great story. And I really think it's great that Max saw something in you and, and was patient and, and worked with you and really, uh, made such an imprint on your playing and now you're producing and you're working as an engineer producer with other bands in your studio. So that's a great story. And who better to learn from than a guy who's produced Ozzy and all these other people? Yeah, I mean, he, he, he's a legend and, and, and he's a legend for good reason. You know, like he's a teacher, he's a mentor and, uh, you know, like he could have Bob Easley and then to to you know, the base in the band, but he actually took the time, to spend the time, and uh, I, I I thank him and I owe him I owe him a lot. Nice, Mark. Cool. And then, of course, after that first record, it was about I guess two years later. You came out with the self titled, and it was a new singer, Robert Mason who we now know with from Warren. I think he's doing Lynch Mob again, actually, right now. Any memories of, of Robert coming in and you guys uh, going out with him and recording with him? Yeah, I mean, I, I remember the whole Oni debacle and rift between George and Oni on the road and George trying to fire Oni or Oni quitting or whatever the... the the storyline is, but I remember all the events that led up to that. Uh, and the last one we did is that in concert live national TV show on ABC. It was a Friday night show called In Concert, and that was the last show we ever did with Oni. And then the hunt went on, and we auditioned a bunch of people to sing. And uh, Robert flew out from New Jersey, and uh, he blew us away. And we immediately started writing records. And um, George wanted to make sure that we didn't fall into the same live pitfalls that we fell into with only performing live on, on, on the Wicked Tour. So we went out and we tried to burn Robert out. We literally took like a, a hellacious run up and down the West Coast. It was like 14 shows in 15 days of that we were headlining. So we were playing two, two and a half hour sets 
and we literally were trying to destroy Robert's voice, and we couldn't do it. He <laughs> just kept getting stronger and stronger. Every night he would deliver again, and then we try again, and then, you know, we picked the hardest songs, like Street Fighting Man and Tooth and Nail, like all the high stuff that's hard. To, and we, we, we tried to blow them out, and we couldn't, you know? Like, wow. And that, after that run, we did that little run, run. It was probably like a two-week run up and down the West Coast. We went back to Phoenix, where we were based, and we started writing the second record, and that's when... Uh, Keith Olsen was coming out to Scottsdale and hanging out with us, and we were working on the second record. Wow, right on. And of course, we've spoken about Jakey Lee and, and uh, George Lynch, but you've also played with another legendary guy, Ace Frehley. You spent how long with Ace? Yeah, some guy named Ace, right? Yeah. <laughs> I was in, uh, it was weird. Um, there were times where we were on. And we worked, and then there were times where we all we were off a lot because he was doing like science fiction, signing stuff instead of. And, uh, I think all total, like the day I met him at his house on his couch, the day that I got fired, it was probably about seven years. So, Anthony, you uh, let me. Um... <laughs> Uh, kind of go through your history with Ace a little bit for everybody who might not know. So, so basically, I think <laughs> if I'm wrong, maybe around 2007, 2008, um, you guys started working together. You put together a new band for Ace, and and, and you took it out on the road around 2008. And at that point, um, and really up until you left the group, you were tour managing, you were like the musical director, and you were really um, doing a whole lot. And, and um, how, how were those early days for you when you were putting the new Ace Frehley band together? Well, the original one that I wanted Ace to try, which he did, was um, I knew Scott Coogan. Um, after Oni left Lynch Mob, um, Oni had a band with Rowan Robertson from Dio called uh, Violet's Demise. And they went in the studio um, after Oni uh, was out of Lynch Mob, and they made an incredible record with Dave Jordan. It's one of my favorite records. I still listen to it every day. And it's really hard to find. Um, the band was called Violet's Demise. I think they re-released it. They got the masters from Atlantic and released it as like Logan Robertson or something like that. But it, it's incredible. And um, Scott Coogan played drums on that record. And uh, I always loved his drumming. And then when he was in Destruction with Nikki Six and Tracy Guns, got to sing me a little bit. So I went to see him do this Led Zeppelin. He does this cover band where he plays drums and sings lead. And uh, close your eyes and he's doing bottom and plant. And you swear it's them. He's that good. And I was wow. like, he was out in Australia. And I was like, Scott, you got to get up here. I, I really want you to be Ace's drummer because you sing so great. It'll open us up to do the Kiss stuff that Paul sings, like we could do Love Gun and we, we could do all those songs if you get up here. And uh, so we flew up and he, uh, he came up and he stayed at my apartment in New York. And at the time, um, my buddy Jason, um, Jason Huff, I had played for a minute in the Bull Boys with him. Um, he was he's a very good host of our age, all of us. And uh, he wanted to play guitar with, with Ace. Um, he grew up on Ace's riffs, you know? So I was like, okay, great. Like, so that's the band. So Jason flew in, stayed at my apartment. And uh, we went up, we rehearsed once at Schoolhouse, my studio in Manhattan. And then the next day, I really wanted to go up to Ace's house and see the guitar collection and everything. So I was like, hey, Ace, what if we come up and jam again today? You know, I'll bring Scott and Jason up on Metro North and we'll jam out up to Austin, you know? 
and we'll play again because I really wanted I really wanted Hooker to see uh, see Ace's collection, you know. And right. um, so we went up and we jammed again. We had a great time, but Jason needed to work, and uh, we were going to do the Anomaly record, and Ace obviously was going to play all the guitars. So that was when Jason and Alice Cooper's band and toured with Eric on drums. Singer was playing drums. And they toured. I saw them with Heaven and Hell and Queensryche at Jones, at Jones Beach. And Jason was playing guitar with Alice Cooper. And then Jason got up being a death punch. Um, so then we held the audition again. We had like probably 10 guitar players come out to a, a, a rehearsal room in uh, Manhattan. And that's when we got to you know, we hired Eric. Derek, right. And that's Derek Hawkins, who we've had on the show as well. Uh, well, I thought that line, I only saw you guys with that lineup one time, and that was at the Hard Rock Cafe in New York, the special gig that you Yeah, had. that was the first gig. That was, well, actually, it was the second gig. We played the Chance the night before as a tune-up, and it was the Halloween show in Times Square. It was, it was right. Ace's return for the yeah, which was a great show, and then and you guys toured back then, uh, and then when when uh, the group regrouped again a year or two later, uh, that's when uh, Todd Youth, uh, the late I mean the late Todd Youth, it's so sad that yeah. he uh, became the guitar player. Yes, and that, and then and then after that, something happened between Kung and Ace, and then that was the drama. And Matt Starr, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. The, on, the, uh, on the, uh, the Anomaly Tour. First tour was called the Rocket Ride Tour. I always, I always thought, I, like, I always tried to tell Ace, you know, I'm like, it's always Ace really at his artist in, in the liner notes, you know, and, and, and everything. I'm like, that carries some weight. You know, being ex-Kiss, your fans are going to want to show. They're not just going to want you to show up on rented backline like a bar band and just rip through the songs. They're going to want to show. So when we went out with the Rocket Ride Tour, we wore the face suits, we had a backdrop, me, lighting from the floor, we had smoke, we had lasers, we had, we had a walk-on kind of introduction. And it was, I always thought, like, I'm, it's got to be a show. You're not a bar band, you know? Like, like. Kiss was always known for putting on a show. You know, you don't have to go to that extent, but you have to do more than just show up on rented gear and and and, and blaze through the songs. You know, right, and Anthony? You made one of my favorite ever, or not one, but you made the the blue mirrored speaker cabinets, and you did an amazing job. And I I remember just uh, there was a show in. Uh, and the whole back line was set up that you created, and it just looked so good. But anywhere you set up that back line, it looked great. And we built, we built big heads, the, the dummy Marshall, small, small heads with the on them. And we did it all. I mean, it was, it was a show. You know? Before I was in you, you were in, you were in store for an event, you know? And uh, and he's killing back then. He was playing great. Uh, you know, he was ripping. Um, like that, the rocket ride and the anomaly tours were. We were we were moving some air. We it was, you know. And Anthony, you told me that you have been speaking to Ace about once a month. You said you know you keeping in touch. Yeah, you know, quick little texts here and there, and you know, I always check in. Uh, you know, I still, yeah, he's still my friend, and we're still brothers. You know, like it's just uh, I'm glad he's back on the East Coast now, and, and I'm glad he's happy. You know. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And Anthony, what was I going to say? There was um, heck, there was a gig, and this is not what I was going to say. Oh, I know what I was going to say, but I wanted to tell you there there was one gig that we thought you might come to. It was in Philly, and and Ace was like, "Yeah, we got to get Anthony up to play. That would have been a great thing." But I think something. Uh, came up and it was in PA and it just, we just couldn't get it together to, ha uh, I think maybe just your schedule, maybe you were mixing somebody at that point. But uh, I, I wonder. I'm not, it's kind of like I got cold feet, you know, like it, it's kind of like, I wanted to go see Rocco and Night Bob and, and Ange and all the guys, you know, 
and, 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 and all the guys that were there when I was there. But it's kind of like, you know, going to see your old band, it kind of sucks, you know? It's like, it, it's kind of like seeing, you know, it's, uh, I don't know. You know what I would say? It's almost like seeing your girlfriend with a different guy, right? Yeah, and yeah, it's just weird. And I just, I felt weird. And like, you know, I'd love to go see, hang out, maybe go to dinner and shoot the shit with him. But, I, you know, I don't, it's kind of weird, you know? Like, I just, the same thing with Lynch Mob. It's like, Oni always calls me when they play. And like, oh, come see us. And I'm like, I don't want to sit there. You know, like, it's kind of weird, you know? <laughs> There's there's a really funny thing that goes around on the internet and it says this is what a musician feels like at a concert and they showed a like a, a football game and like <laughs> football players and then there's like one guy in the 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 stands with like a football uniform on and that's sort of how you feel like you're like yeah I'm supposed my, to like, my wife loves to go to shows um I I don't like to go to shows because I get kind of pissed off that I'm not touring, you know? Like, it, it's like I get pissed off that, that I'm not working. And, you know, and I love to tour and I love playing music and I, and I love performing and I love, I really love the road. So if I go see another band, even if it's a band I've, I've never been in, I still get like kind of pissed. Like, I, I want to be out there, you know? I want to be on the bus. I want to be rolling. I want to be playing. I want to be in front of my bass set, moving air, you know? It kind of sucks, you know? Mark, I'll, let, I'll, I'll turn it back over to Mark, but I just wanted to say one quick thing. Anthony, I learned a lot from you uh, when we were on tour together. You were a great tour manager, like a musician slash tour manager at the same time. And I think we made a great team when we were together. We I did. Yes. You had, you had the harder part, though. You had the harder job. <laughs> dealing with Ace and Rachel was way harder than dealing with 10 guys in the band and the crew. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, Anthony, I, I thank you for everything that you taught me. And uh, I thought we, we had some great times, you know, all around, all around the country. We're glad I could help. And, and Anthony, I, I definitely want to circle back to what you said earlier in the interview uh, before we let you go. There is new music being worked on by Red Dragon Cartel, correct? No, well, he's going to... He said a few new songs or I something? Don't know. I don't know what Jake's doing in Vegas. He might be noodling on his guitar and coming with. I haven't heard anything. But okay. what he said was he would love to tour spring 2021. And then after we tour on Patina and give it its due, then he right. could reevaluate anything and then look, look and see if he wants to do another record or not. Okay. Okay, good. Thank you for clarifying that. Yeah. Um, and And... When Jake pulls out older songs from his catalog to play live, out of those songs, the older songs, what are some of your favorite to play? Well, we don't really do many old stuff. I mean, we do a lot more Badlands. Ozzy, um, he, like, w when I first joined, we did the, the hits. We did Bark at the Moon, and we did Shot in the Dark, and... Uh, we did more of those, but now, nowadays he doesn't really want to play those. He only wants to play the songs that Ozzy never played live. Um, like, he, we did Spiders, which was Bark at the Moon's B-side. B-side, right? right, wow. And then I think next tour we're going to do Waiting for Darkness, because they're songs that Ozzy never played live. And uh, as far as the Badlands stuff goes, um, I'm a big Voodoo Highway guy, you know? I love, the, I love Voodoo Highway. Um, I love Soul Stealer. I love Last Time. I love that, that's that three-day funk. I, that was the record that I really, like, loved. Um, he just picks him out whatever he wants to play, you know? And, uh, and we just learn him and do him, you know? <laughs> you know? It's pretty much, it's, it is Jake's band. Um, we're just there to, 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 to help him get his musical vision across, you know, he calls all the shots. Wow. Well, that would be it. Waiting for Darkness was, 
just an incredible song that closed the Bark at the Moon record. I believe in years later, they when they reissued it, they put Spiders actually as the last song, but it was such an amazing closer for that that record. Um, and that would be an absolute treat to to see you guys play live. So you're thinking maybe it's in a, 2021. It's a I mean, I remember, I remember when, when Max came out to mix Patina, he came out to the studio to listen to recorded versions of the songs that uh, at that point were where they were. And uh, he loved the record. And I took him and Jake to this barbecue joint. And this barbecue joint was like a bike, it was like a biker joint. And there were like five or 10 people in there. And Max got up from the bar to go to the bathroom. And Jake went out to the parking lot to uh, call his wife. And I went to the jukebox and I put Bark at the Moon on the jukebox. And then when the two of them came back in, they sat next to me at the bar and all the, all the bikers and biker chicks who were shooting pool were all singing along and rocking it out. And little did they know that like Jakey Lee and Max Norman were sitting at the bar five feet from them, you know? Wow, that's <laughs> awesome. Was and they bitched and moaned. They don't like, neither of them liked the mix on that record. They both felt that Max should have mixed it. They all both said that the keyboard was too loud and the guitars aren't loud enough. And who mixed that? I believe that was Tony Bongiovi, who I believe mixed yeah. it. Tony, yeah, Tony, I was in a band. The band I was in right before I joined Lynch Mob was managed by Tony Bongiovi. Uh, the band was called French Lick because everybody in the band except me was from French Lick, Indiana. And we used to like sleep in Tony Bongiovi's apartment on the penthouse power station. And, uh, and we just help out around the studio. And uh, that's where I think I caught the studio bug, you know? And uh, right, Tony right. Bongiovi was our manager of the band. But yes, wow, okay. Record. I don't know, like neither Jake nor Max knew why Max didn't mix it. Um, he had just come off uh, um, uh, Diary of a Madman, which was an incredible record, you know? And the sound on that was uh, incredible, you know? Yeah. yeah. So, you know what, um, Anthony, before we, we, before we let you go, I just want to make sure we get a chance to talk about your complex, your amazing studio, and some of the new bands that you're working with in the Harrow, cool. Pennsylvania area. Yeah, I mean, the studio is, um, it's called Obscenic Arts. It's online. Um, I'm a little bit north of Gettysburg and a little bit south of Harrisburg, about two and a half hours from Manhattan. And it's a 10 acre horse ranch. And uh, I built a recording studio in this massive chicken coop and a three car garage sized carriage house. And bands come out and um, from national bands to bigger bands, they stay on the ranch. We record and uh, we, we get a good positive energy and a good recording and, and everybody's always happy with the end result. Um, I've worked with, lately I've been working with some really great new bands. Uh, there's a great band out of New York called Ryder that uh, their new CD just came out that I did called Killer Karma. And uh, I also work with this band out of New Jersey called Dogs of Reason. It's very Black Crows, Led Zeppelin. And, um, and I'm working with this band called the War Brothers out of Connecticut that are very early Motley, early Van Halen. They're four brothers, two sets of twins, two years apart. Um, wow. Like mid-20s. Mid and uh, their father taught them right. They were raised on old school metal like Van Halen and early Motley. And uh, they play, and they're really great. We just, uh, we, they were just out here last weekend. We were cutting vocals. And, um, and then uh, I'm working on this really great new project called uh, Legendary Artists. And um, it's this great couple that owned an amazing bar in San Jose called The Rock Bar. And they moved to Reno. And it, it's got a lot of people that played the rock bar on it. The first song I just mixed had Frank Hannon from Tesla and George Lynch and, um, and Greg Golden and Joe Retta on it, a great song called Cherokee. 
and uh, Gary Howie's on one song. Then there's another song they're talking about maybe getting George, Warren, and Jake to all play on, or Kirk Hammett, Warren, and Jake to play on. Um, it's just this great record with all these big kind of names and um, just doing song by song. And it's going to be a singles-based format, and they're going to release a new song every other month, you know. And the first song will be Cherokee with uh, Frank from Tesla and uh, Greg Golden and Joe Retta and George Lynch on. I just finished mixing it two days ago. Excellent. Anthony, so we can't wait to hear that. You, you definitely keep us posted, and we'll let everybody know when that's out. And we want to thank you for uh, coming on the show tonight, Anthony, my longtime friend. Thank you so much, Anthony. My hey, John. To New York. Which, John, which, which last fall is my uh, guest for the uh, gift for the guest one? Oh, OK. Um, <laughs> don't I get a parting gift or something? Yeah, this, this, uh, this is this is, it looks like an ace guitar. This will be a free pickup. Classic. Beautiful. <laughs> All right, I'll take it. It's black. You know me. Everything, every every bass I own is black. Absolutely. <laughs> and um, I don't know. Thank if you, Michael. Thank Anthony. But hey, Michael, uh, he's he's just logged on now. And uh, Anthony, thank you so much. Uh, I will be. Thank you for having me on. Thank you for having thank me you. on and letting me promote Sabina. Bye, Mark. Thank you. Keep us posted on all that new music you're recording. Uh, Anthony, it sounds like you're working with some great bands. We can't wait to hear it. And always an honor to talk to you. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me on. And ladies and gentlemen, a guy that I've been a fan.